Today, why God trusts you more than you trust yourself. Stay tuned. As a sixth generation pastor, Eric Johnson has a passion to see transformation take place in people, cities, and nations. Eric serves on the senior leadership team of Bethel Church in Redding, California, alongside his parents, Bill and Benny Johnson. A best-selling author, Eric longs to see people gain confidence and reach their true potential. This is the driving force behind his books, Momentum and Christ in You, Why God Trusts You More Than You Trust Yourself. From Bethel Church in Redding, California, please welcome Eric Johnson. Eric, welcome back, man. Good, Good to have you. Good to be back. Now, we've already did one program together about yeah. this book called Christ in You. And uh, you've got a passion for the church to recognize who they are. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit today about, you know, because we're pastors and leaders or, you know, whichever way you want to describe ourselves in the fivefold. The fivefold is to equip the saints yeah. for the work of the ministry. But you and I were talking off camera and you were talking about this is so crucial for everybody in the body of Christ. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I think once you begin to realize that Christ in you, actually for now, not just for later, but it's for now. Mm -hmm. We were talking the last last show about not just trying to get to heaven. Right. And I think I think the church experienced. Uh, you know, if you go back to the '70s, mm -hmm. there were some books that came out that pretty much said we're all doomed. Let's just wait until Jesus comes back. <laughs> yeah. So the response yep. to that was, well, we shouldn't we shouldn't actually occupy. We shouldn't right. actually do anything beneficial because it's all, you know, it's all doomed. So in doing that, we kind of disengaged from what I would propose, what we're supposed to be really engaged with, not to see the kingdom come on this earth and every kingdom of this world will eventually be our God. And we disengaged with that. So in turn, the ramifications of that, fast forward 40, 50 years later, is now the society is being led by people that don't have the heart of God. Not mm -hmm. as a, that's a very general statement because yeah. we know God yeah. has strategically mm -hmm. placed people. But when I talk about the body of Christ, I think we, we, we've been told, just wait till Jesus comes back. So right. we just disengage. So we're having to uh, maybe undo some of that. And so for me, my passion as a leader is to help the body of Christ realize, no, you were born, mm -hmm. uh, not to be cliche, but you were born for a time as this. We have a great opportunity yes. before us. It's not just for the leaders and pastors and the fivefold. No, no, it's, it's all of us are engaged in this thing. So and good. so we begin to, when we begin to shift back to the original design, if you will, yeah. it, it, changes, it changes how we do life. It changes everything. So what I've had to do, um, I should say we are the team back in Reading, what we've talked about, okay, let's, let's go back. What is ministry? Let, let's just talk about that because... I think in a lot of churches, people feel like, I'm in ministry when I do this, this, and this, and this. And it's usually if I'm preaching or I'm doing something that we do. We have to get a much broader understanding of what ministry is. Yes. And until we get that, until the body of Christ embraces that, everybody's going to be trying to get behind a pulpit, yeah. which, is, which, is, which is not a great plan. No, we've got plan. enough problems behind the pulpit. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> it's just not a good plan. And so we have to be, so I feel like for me, I've taken the liberty to redefine what ministry is in the attempt to activate the body to realize, oh, me doing my job, starting a business, being a teacher, all the different professions, being a home with my kids, it's actually part of God advancing the kingdom. Yes. And I think you can find a lot of great clues in the Old Testament. You know, there's one verse in Exodus, it's in chapter 35 in that area. I know it's left page, right column, I know yeah. that. Um, but there's one verse in there, it taught when Moses got the blueprint to build the, temp, the tabernacle, mm -hmm. and there's one verse in there, in the middle of the building process, there's one verse that talks about women whose hearts were stirred with them to make yarn. Hmm. And it's one of the most mundane, like why, why is it a big deal? I, I personally feel that God wanted it to be clear that you, might, you could either be Moses or you could be someone that does something as simple as making yarn, but all of it contribute to advancing the kingdom. Yes. So when we begin to realize, man, God had the value for ministry in a much broader perspective, then it activates the body to re-engage with their cities, with their nation, Beautiful. with their neighborhoods, yeah. versus I'm just waiting to get out of here. <laughs> and so for me, that, yep. that, that's what I like to touch on. I think you're right. Like, 
I think the first time we hear the word anointing used in the Old Testament is for business people like Bezalel who are going to work with silver and gold and create buildings. First person in the Bible that was filled with the Spirit of God would was that guy right there. That's yeah. phenomenal. It wasn't now, Moses, which is fascinating. That is fascinating. Like, we're talking about the Moses. Yep. And it was one of Moses' servants, if yep. you will, that was filled with the Spirit of God first, which violates yep. a lot. <laughs> well, I tell people all the time that, you know, some people, they'll talk about the Roman Catholic Church and go, you know, they've got popes and cardinals and bishops, and they'll struggle with that. And I'll say, you know what? The Spirit-filled church has the same problem. If you want to get healed, you've got to find a healing evangelist. If you want a word from God, you've got to find a prophet. If you, you know, if you, and you're thinking, just a minute, you are a child of God. Christ is in you. Mm -hmm. You can hear and get direction from Him. He can, yep. You don't have to run some. You literally can see the gifts of the Spirit flow through you in those situations. And, and I think that them waking up and going, it's not about the fivefold ministry only, yep. but we can. And I love what you had to say about the end times because it's true. We literally, with our teaching and the predominance of end time stuff, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back. If he comes back today, he's not going to omit me. He'll take me. But until then, like you said, let's occupy, let's Let's get that original mandate out of Genesis and have dominion and raise up actors and teachers and lawyers and, yep. and recognize that the community that we have with, with Christians who love God in every one of these areas is how we build great society. Yeah. Uh, we have to ask the question, you know, the goal, the, what's, the goal, what's the goal of the kingdom? Yeah. You know, and I think for most of the church, most, uh, this is obviously a general statement, most believers think the goal of the kingdom is to get saved and get to heaven. Yes. That's so important. I, again, it's never, it's never, we're not doing that anymore. No, that's very important. Yes. But there's also a lot of other things. You know, Jesus never really gave an altar call. No. He, he, he never even said, hey, I'm preaching tonight down by the ocean, come down. He, he, he just lived life yep. and touched culture like not, we dream of. Yeah. I mean, he was engaging with prostitutes. He's engaging with the top scholars of the day. He's engaging with tax collectors, sinners. He's engaging with culture and society. Like he, he was perfect at it. And so I, I think for us, it's time for us to re, not reinvent, but to revisit. I think so. How, how do we actually live on this earth and actually touch culture and society in a way? I mean, he preached a message of repentance. Sinners repent, repent, repent. And those very people wanted to be with him and invited Jesus to all the parties. Yeah. But yet today, when we talk repentance, the very people we're talking to, they want nothing to do with us. Yeah. So something's missing. And yeah. I, that's what I want us to go after. Like, what would it be like to preach a message of repentance, but everybody wants you at their party? Right. What, to me, that's where, that's where we can impact culture and society and, and literally usher in the goodness of God into that environment. So we have a lot to revisit, undo, and learn. So that's what's exciting about what's ahead for the church. Amen. Let's take a break right yep. here. When we come back, let's go there. Let's unpack some of this stuff for them. Okay. My guest today is Eric Johnson. We're just talking from this book that he wrote called Christ in You. Need to get a copy. I'll be right back with Eric. So I, I use uh, an illustration. It's like two sides of the same coin. One side is we are everything because Christ is in us. On the other side of the coin is we are nothing without Him. And I think if you, if you dive into people, you know, into different believers, you'll find they usually pick one or the other. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource.
church. God created church for you to have a home, a family, and a purpose. It's a place where we can connect with each other, where everyone should find love, acceptance, and forgiveness. But the church is not a building. It isn't the brick, the doors, stained glass, or the steeples. It's the people. We fill it with life and laughter. We are the church, and we can meet online from anywhere in the world. Let's connect at Springs Online today. Welcome back. My guest today is Eric Johnson, and we're talking about Christ in you. Now, we were just talking off camera about being great. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an important topic because I kind of grew up in a denomination where all we could talk about was humility, 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 yeah. humility, and everything was pride almost. You were scared to do anything great. Yeah. Tell me about how you see that. Yeah, you know, I tell people, Christ in you, if we only get what Christ is in us, and we don't get the other half, then we have the potential to be the most arrogant people on the face of the earth. <laughs> so I, I use uh, an illustration, it's like two sides of the same coin. One side is we are everything because Christ is in us. On the other side of the coin is we are nothing without him. And I think if you, if you dive into people's, you know, into different believers, you'll find they usually pick one or the other. You know, the, like you just said, we're nothing without him. We're nothing without him. I remember I did a trip to another country, and one of the worship songs, uh, most of the worship songs really accentuated, we are worms, we are nothing, we are nothing. And so there's definitely that going on. But on the, same, on the same conversation, no, we are everything with him, and we're nothing without him. If we hold those two things close, I believe we have the ability to be the most confident people on the face of the earth, mm -hmm. but not done in arrogance, but done in pure confidence in Jesus walk. So we have to, so as we go down this road of Christ in you, we have to realize that there's actually permission to be great. Hmm. You know, there's a couple of times in the gospel where, where Jesus, um, he, he's approached by his disciples or he stumbled upon a conversation they're having. And it was, you know, one time the disciples came to Jesus and said, hey, how, um, how do we be great? Who's the greatest in the kingdom? Which is pretty gutsy for, <laughs> for the disciples to ask. Yeah. And then another time Jesus stumbled on a conversation and, and finds out that they've been arguing about who's the greatest. So we know there was something in the disciple that wanted to be great. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've misunderstood that entire, those two, at least two situations. I think it's, oh, well, we can't be great, so let's just, let's just not be great until we talk about humility, we talk about all these things. No, Jesus never, never rebukes them, never addresses them on pride and arrogance. He said, oh, you want to be great? Well, let me show you how. Hmm. And he said, be like a child. So what he does, he doesn't say you can't be great. He just says the way you're going about it, 
That's not the way we do it here in the kingdom, if you will. This is how we become great. So he basically gives them permission to be great, yeah. but gives them the right road to go on. And so that one area, the body of Christ has such a hard time with, because we're yeah. afraid of being, Jesus wasn't as scared of pride as we are. <laughs> he wasn't. He actually yeah. created a culture where it was allowed to percolate, it was allowed to come to the surface, he just redirected hearts. It's fascinating to me, if you look at the life of Jesus, he didn't spend a lot of time rebuking his disciples, he no. just spent a lot of time redirecting their hearts. So good. And I think for us, we spent a lot of time in the body of Christ rebuking people. It's like, no, 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 let's just redirect their hearts. Come on. Let's no, just... that's good. That's a, that's a really good point. So we got to, I think we got to spend more time rebuking them. So when someone, this is so prevalent in the church, if someone has pride and arrogance, we take them out of any form of ministry and we put them in a back room somewhere for two years. Yeah to try to prove they have no pride. No, no, pride and arrogance is just the opposite of what God had in mind. We just need a redirection of hearts. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul talked about, he said, we are transformed from glory to glory. So we know there's only one direction in the kingdom, mm -hmm. and it's from glory to glory. So when you look at being great, okay, let's just talk about being great. Because in today's culture, uh, I think our kids mm -hmm. would probably, if you, if you ask them, what do you want to do with your life, it always revolves around being famous. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're the same thing? You know, it's a good question. I mean, every child, uh, I'm, as we talked about, in my church, we have we've stayed, we have about six or seven steps up to the stage. And I've seen it for years now, 15, 20 years, however long it's been. And every worship service, without fail, I will see a parent bring up a one, two-year-old, you know, in, up in the front to worship. And they'll put the kid down because they want to worship. They put their hands up. And I've seen it every time. That child, once that child sees the stairs, they have one thing in mind, and that's to go up. <laughs> yeah. It's inside every yeah. child, at least, is the desire to go up. We used to own a home where we loved the home, but when we walked in the backyard, that's what confirmed that this was our home because of the perfect climbing tree in our backyard. <laughs> yeah. And when my daughter, when they were really little, when they saw it for the first time, the first thing they did, they got in the tree and went to the highest they could go. So it's inside every it's person, the good. desire to be great, to go up, to climb. It, it's just in us. But somewhere along the line, something kicks in where I think we discourage. Hmm. We don't, I don't think we understand greatness yet. Yeah. I don't think we fully grasp what greatness in the kingdom is. No. And so if, I think if we as leaders and the body of Christ can understand that, the permission, the culture, um, we punish people for taking, for failing, and we've got to stop that. You know, when you look at our culture today, not as a church, but even as a country, America, Canada, um, there are many people who are famous who have done nothing great. Mm -hmm. We just have a television culture, a reality TV shows where people are so fascinated almost with our, the opposite, we're, you know, we're, we're espousing stupid truths and partying and getting drunk and people just want to watch it. So you become famous and have done nothing great. And then I know many people who I consider phenomenally great in the kingdom that have never become famous or got their own reality mm -hmm. TV show. And I often encourage our young people to say, hey, God is fine with you being great. He's, he's totally fine. Don't get off track. You were talking about redirecting people because I find the ones who continually labor at just being famous mm -hmm. that they end up running into problems and hurting themselves and their lives but if you stay close to Christ yeah. and, and just desire to be great and be the servant of all one guy asked me well how great can you think about yourself and I thought about that for a minute and tell me what you think about this I said well you can think as great of yourself as you want as long as you do two things give God the glory for the gifts and the abilities within you and esteem everybody else greater than you. <laughs> if you do those two things, yeah. you're probably pretty mm -hmm. fine. What's fascinating, and Jesus, and I'm exploring, I'm in the middle of exploring that Jesus, you know, there's one point he said, let your light shine, mm -hmm. which is fascinating. We, he doesn't say, let my light shine. He said, yeah. let your light shine. Yeah. So there's still something in there that I think we need to explore and go, okay, uh, obviously, there's a danger in, oh, it, it's, uh, and I get that. That's why I think there's two sides to the conversation. If we hold that dear, I think we're going to step into uh, greatness that God had in mind. Beautiful. And it won't be prideful. It won't be yep. self-conceited. You know, the difference between confidence and arrogance to me is confidence is driven by what it can give, and arrogance is motivated by what it can gain. Mm. And so I, I'm, I'm looking for this. Yep. How can the church be a confident church, not be timid, 
Yep. It's going to look different for every person. Yes. But actually step into the thing that God had in mind. Well, it's, it's interesting to watch, even in today's world, because as never before, those who have been doing great things for God are rising to the front of cameras and television shows and reality shows uh, with famous people. But there's a beauty about them. Mm -hmm. It's not stupid or, or weird or granola. And, yeah. uh, and everywhere you turn, you're seeing people professing Christ in a wonderful way. So being famous is not a problem for me at all. I think just continually seeking it, seeking it, seeking it, rather than seeking Jesus yeah. as the author and yeah. the finisher is maybe, is maybe where they get off. So when you talk about the body of Christ and Christ in you, when you look at the Bible even, like you've got, we don't seem to have stories or examples in the epistles from the book of Acts and on, every truth in the Bible is being worked through an apostle, an evangelist. Uh, and so I think that a lot of churches, you know, when I was a kid, we'd have a, a whole congregation and the missionary would get up and say, you're all called, you got to go forth. And people who were called to business and mm -hmm. the arts would get up and go to a mission field. Because that was the, like you were saying earlier, it was the only way I think they felt God could use us. But today, God is using people who are in business, mm -hmm. who are in government, yeah. and they're impacting more people than most pastors. Mm -hmm. So we've really got to be open with our congregations and with the body of Christ. I believe this. so. I, I think, you know, Paul said Jesus is the wisdom and power of God. Mm -hmm. And I think the Old Testament, most of the emphasis is on the wisdom of God. There's definitely some power aspects of God in there, no question. Yeah. But there's a lot of emphasis on the wisdom of God. And in the New Testament, there's an extreme attention to the power of God through Jesus Christ. And so I think we have to understand um, in the body of Christ, what, the, what is power and what is wisdom? And I think if you were to go to, you know, it would be kind of a fun experiment to go to different communities in the body of Christ. Some will accentuate more the power than the wisdom and others will accentuate wisdom more than power. So I'm on this journey uh, with our leadership team and our church family. We're on this journey right now. What would it be like if we have a culture and environment that I don't know if equally is the right word, but maybe we have an equal value for power and an equal value for wisdom. What would that do to a city? What would that do to a nation? What would that do to the, the planet? So that's kind of the journey we're on right now. So Beautiful. not just showing one part of God, we're showing maybe more the f more full dimension of God on some level. That's so. very good. I, you know, in our last moment, I'll just share a kind of a pet peeve I have is that <laughs> <coughs> so many people see the church meetings as the place to move in the things of the Spirit. That's one well, of my pet peeves too. Is it okay? <laughs> you must be a second generation <laughs> pastor, all right? Um, so how many people can have the microphone? I mean, how many people can play a piano? But yet it's not. The church of Jesus Christ is an equipping place where we come and we learn, and then the world is the arena. Yep. Go to your job, go to your neighbors, and if you want to operate in the things of the Spirit, go there and just do it, and do it in a Spirit contemporary way. Yep. And, and I think that's a real key, because we're all trying to interpret the Bible as to you know, how do we operate in the gifts of the Spirit and the things of the Spirit within the church, yep. and I think it's the whole wrong question. Yeah, I it's, think so. I have a friend who says, uh, he's a close friend of mine, he's the pastor of another church in town, he says, um, our goal isn't to gather everyone under one roof. Our goal is to gather everyone under one father. Beautiful. And so that, that just changes the game. It does. Eric, thank you for being with us today. This has been excellent. My guest today has been Eric Johnson, and we've been talking from this book that is available out there today called Christ in You. We'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. I really hope you enjoyed our conversation with Eric Johnson today. You know, the cool thing about this show is I get to welcome pastors and authors from all walks of life. 
I want to talk to you about something that's really important to me. It's this concept of spirit contemporary. You know, so many people, when they hear the things of the spirit shared or the gospel shared, if it's done in a judgmental or a condescending way, they are so turned off. And especially in the first world, in North America, for example, Europe, people just back away. And so it's crucial for us that I look at two things that are so important when sharing the gospel. Be spiritually alive. I mean filled with God's love so that you value the people that are around you and then learn to speak and conduct yourself in a contemporary way that connects with people. Because if you don't connect with people, they're not going to listen to you. And that's what makes this show so valuable. You know, for a gift of $30 or more today, you're going to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around this planet in a way that is relevant and contemporary authentic and so many people are responding as they hear the gospel but shared in a spirit contemporary way. You know, we live our lives often so focused on ourselves and we wonder, you know, isn't there more to life? One of the most incredible things you can do is become a part of this family. Your gift is going to see names written in the Lamb's book of life. Your gift is going to cause people to come to know Christ. For $30 or more, we're going to send you this CD pack that I know is going to inspire you and help you in your everyday life. Why don't you go to your phone right now? and be part of an answer to so many people who are hungry and looking for Jesus. They just don't know what that answer is yet. God bless you. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Tomorrow, Dr. Glidden joins Leon to discuss the power of holistic medicine, body, mind, spirit, and emotions. To the allopathically trained MD, consciousness itself is a function of biochemistry, and once you die, it's lights out, game over.